past Monday, we got two big breakups. There's the Danaher spinoff of its water quality business as Veralto, which we talked about a couple days ago, one which we own for the Travel Trust. And then there's Kellogg turning into two companies, WK Kellogg for the North American cereal business and Kellanova for snacks. So far, the market hasn't loved either of these moves, especially the Kellogg descendants. Kellanova finished the week down almost 10 percent. Well, WK Kellogg was off 30 percent. Yes, you heard me, 30 percent, not 13, 30. I think the spinoff makes a lot of sense, both from a business perspective and a stock perspective, but I also know the packaged food place are just hated here. I mean, they are just despised like you wouldn't believe. And that's, of course, in the wake of the powerful anti-obesity drugs that are now on the market. So could this be a buying opportunity, or should we just let this steer clear of the book? First, let me give you the rationale for this breakup, because it's compelling. You can think of Kellogg as splitting into a cereal business and a snack food business. But what really matters is that cereal's basically a no-growth business. While snacks are a growth business, or at least that's how things look when they decide to reorganize in June of 2022. While W.K. Kellogg, the spinoff, the one, the cereal spinoff, got a nice boost during the pandemic, we're now back to normal. Normal is a world where cereal's in secular decline. Despite its iconic brands and bountiful cash flow, the lack of growth made this division a real drag on the old Kellogg. By the time the breakup arrived, Kellogg was already getting roughly 80% of its sales from snacks anyway. Think Cheez-Its, Pringles, Pop-Tarts, neutral Game Bars, Club Crackers, and many other brands. They've been considering a cereal spinoff for years. Management figured that Kellanova would be able to get a much higher valuation as a pure play on snacks without cereal dragging it down. From 2019 through 2022, Kellogg's snack division delivered a nearly 9% organic compound annual revenue growth. While cereal was just talking only at less than 1%, Kellanova is also keeping the international cereal business, which is doing be- much better, much better than the North American cereal business, along with noodles, frozen foods, and, uh, including egg and waffles. Basically, after jettisoning the stagnant North American cereal division, management assumed that the remaining Kellanova would be focused on a bunch of much faster growing categories. And that was a good plan in 2022. But it's looking a lot less enticing in 2023 because snacking is slow. Kellanova is now forecasting 3% revenue growth for the full year and 3.1 to 4.6% revenue growth in 2024. So this is much less of a growth vehicle than we thought it would be just 12 months ago. And that's before we even process the impact of these new weight loss drugs that can make people stop craving snacks, something that we heard from Walmart is already starting to lay on the company. Now, if Kellanova can make its earnings forecast, then it's cheaper than your typical snack stock. It's selling for 14 times next year's numbers. Plus, management's targeting a 50% dividend payout ratio, which is what the old Kellogg used to promise investors, although it's usually over-delivered. In the end, this thing could yield somewhere between 3.6% and 4% these levels. I like that, but it's much less attractive here, with the 10-year giving you almost 4.8% risk-free. Very tough competition. All right, now, how about W.K. Kellogg? This is the more traditional version, okay? Although, obviously, not with this. This is the cereal business has been obliterated over the past few days. What the heck is that about? How can I say... How how can I say about this one? Man, I don't know. The old Kellogg decided to spin off North American cereal because it was dragging the rest of the company down. They say they say they can invest in their brands, improve their supply chain and gradually rack up stable growth and steady market share gains. Throw in some margin expansion. WK Kellogg could generate real earnings growth. It's a possibility. They're targeting a 45 percent dividend payout uh, ratio initially, but they hope to increase that in the future after they've done with all the new investment that they have to do to breathe some life into this enterprise. On Monday, though, analysts at Goldman Sachs initiated coverage on W.K. Kellogg with a sell, sell, sell. rating. And I, you know what? I can't totally blame them. Goldman argued the company's supply chain improvement efforts will be hampered by the fact that they've agreed not to close any manufacturing facilities until 2026. And that was part of a labor negotiation a few years ago. These analysts also think W.K. Kellogg will have to borrow money to make these investments because they see cash flow turning negative pretty quickly. I don't like that. It's not a great recipe for higher stock prices. The only good news with W.K. Kellogg, the stock's already plummeted from 14 and changed to 10 and changed just this week. Even Goldman's bearish price target was 11 bucks. So maybe the negativity's baked in here, but you know what? With the food group, I wouldn't bet on it. Hey, speaking of the hideous declines in Kellanova and W.K. Kellogg, I think there are a couple of things going on here. First, the packaged food stocks have been incredibly weak for a few months now. And a lot of that comes down to the relentless rise of interest rates, which makes their dividends much less attractive. This week, Treasury yields skyrocketed, and that made things much worse. Second, like I mentioned earlier, the moment Walmart said they're being hurt a bit by these GLP-1 weight loss drugs, the whole food cohort just started getting rolled. It started rolling over, I mean, even harder. 
especially the snacking plays. Boy, the journal ran a tough piece yesterday. A few analysts have covered it. Bank of America put out a piece today arguing that total calorie consumption could take a 1% to 3% hit from these things. Remember, when you're slow growth, that's big. Now, I'm a big believer in these drugs, as you know, but at this point, the food stocks have come down so much. I got to wonder, maybe some of the worries are overblown. Doesn't matter, though, does it? Tons of investors have suddenly realized these drugs are a problem for the packaged food cohort. And those worries have become an albatross around the whole industry's neck. People are indeed shooting first and asking questions later. But you know what? I kind of agree with that strategy. I can't tell you in good conscience to step in front of a freight train of selling. All aboard! Because I, too, don't know how this situation is really going to play out. However, I'm betting that these GLP-1 weight loss drugs will be much bigger than anybody expects. And that's why we have a huge position, Eli Lilly, for the charitable trust. Plus, I can't tell you when interest rates are going to stop going up. But as long as they remain this elevated, far fewer people will want to buy dividend stocks. You really got to stick your neck out to buy W, uh, to buy Kelanova or WK Kellogg at these levels. And I don't think they're giving you much reason to take that risk. Here's what I will say. Whenever the smoke clears and it's safe or at least safer to invest in the packaged food plays again, I'd be more, much more inclined to buy the snacking focused Kellanova over the WK Kellogg because cereal seems like a dead end to me. At this point, I think Kellanova's got much better brands. No offense to Tony the Tiger, who's great. Bottom line, looking back at these weeks of big breakups, you, you got my bus, you know, by both Dana, her, and the water quality company, Veralto. But as for WK Kellogg and Kellanova, the best I can say is you should sit these ones out. Maybe someday Kellanova will be worth circling back to. But in a world where snack food stocks have gotten the cold shoulder, I don't think we're there yet. Let's take calls. Let's go to Jeffrey in New York. Jeffrey. Hi, Jim. It's Jeffrey calling from Brooklyn, New York. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, of course, neighbor. What's happening? I purchased 25 shares of JM Smuckers at 131 per share, and thereafter the stock has virtually hit a 52-week low every single day for the past few weeks, including today. Should I buy more, just hold mm -hmm. the position, or sell the position? Uh and if I should buy more... At what price? No, Thank I can't count as buying it. Uh, it is down 27%. And the reason I can is because the, people are now going to see that they paid too much for hostess. That's just going to be the prevailing wisdom of Wall Street. So, therefore, I think on a bounce, you might want to lighten up. All right, looking back at this week's big breakups, you've got my bus, you know, by Danner and it's spin-off Veralta. We own them both for the trust. But as for WK Kellogg and Kellanova, I'd sit those two out. They have money is back after the break. Coming up. Kramer did the homework, and now it's time for extra credit. Radnet joins the show with a sharper image of their future. Next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.